Hey everybody, this is Sonia de Soro filming for the Sultan Foundation. You can find them at thesultanfoundation.org. They give away passes for events when this is happening and about $10,000 a year for training. So if you need financial aid and are really into West Coast Swing, check them out. Uh, it's a nonprofit, so you can also donate. Really cool. Thank you, Doug. Uh, so today I'll be talking about frame. The first part you might have done with me before. The second part is the most important. We're going to be talking about winging and bringing the arms up with keeping the frame engaged. So stay tuned. It's coming. First piece. I want you to find the muscles you want to engage for your frame. You can be doing a full plank, a plank on your knees. You can use a wall or counter, whatever. Um, where you can feel some weight in your arms. I'll do the full plank for now. If you do do the full plank, I still want you to engage the rest of your body, have straight legs, engage the glutes, engage the core, so you can get the same sensation that you would get when you're standing up and dancing. So I wouldn't be dancing with West Coast Swing with half bent legs and booty out, and the nice little twerking. Maybe I would, I don't know. So I want you to set up for your plank, push the heels back, straight legs, engage your glutes, engage your core, and we're gonna be keeping the arms straight the entire time. Again, you can be on your knees if you're here. Same thing, pay attention to your posture. So straight arms, we're gonna do scapula push up So that means I'm bringing my chest towards the floor, Scapulas are coming together, and then I'm pushing into the floor, opening my back. Really important that the shoulders stay down the entire time. So not towards the ear, towards the hips. So again, down, and all the way up. You're gonna feel when you're pushing all the way up that your back is open. So that's gonna make you feel the difference between, again, shoulders down, but am I doing this to engage, the scapulas are out, it's actually opening the front body, or am I opening my back? Yeah, so I want you to register the sensation. Once you have it, we're gonna try this standing up. The only difference you're gonna feel is that you don't feel the engagement in the pecs, right? Because you don't have the gravity here. You can retry it even if you've done it on the floor, on the counter, or on the wall, so you feel a little bit less of the pec muscles, and then same thing, shoulders down, pushing, opening the back, you can do a couple scapula push-ups, then register this sensation. One of the way I like to feel it when I'm standing up is, again, shoulders down, like you have really heavy jugs or something in your hands, and then from down to up. And that allows me to keep the arms a little lower, so I'm often seeing people uh, start dancing and their arms are really high and they're already far from the partner and that sets you up in a pretty uncomfortable way to start with. So here, arms from down to up, about hips height. Again, depend on, the, on your partner height for the leader, but generally you want to have access to the hips. If you're by yourself, do it at your hips. And then check if your back is still open. So no scapula is coming out. You can imagine you're hugging a big tree, right? And register this. Now from here, this is your baseline. This is where I'm dancing with my partner, sugar push, whatever, everything is going well. But sometimes I need to bring my arms overhead. You need first to find your range of motion. So when my frame is engaged the way we just did on the floor, this is my maximum on the side. You might be able to go here with your frame engaged. I can't. See how my shoulder is up? That's my cue to say something is going uh, poorly here. So that's my range of motion on the side. That's my range of motion to the front. Again, yours might be different. So my problem is here, at some point in my dancing, I'm gonna want to turn, which if you see the height of my hand, it's gonna be kind of a problem, right? I'm going to want to do styling, or if I'm a leader, I might have to turn a follower that's taller than me. This is not going to work, right? So we're going to talk about 
winging. You can definitely find it by yourself. Um, winging is the idea of if this is the two shoulder blades, you have the bottom pointy part and it goes like a triangle and the bottom part is going to go out and up, really exaggerated motion here. So this is winging up for when my arms are going up, this is going down. If you do have someone that can help you, that's really helpful. So Steven is going to lend me two hands uh, <laughs> for this one. So you're going to ask your partner, grandma, whoever that is, to put their hands on your back. So you want to make sure they're touching the bottom of the shoulder blades and a little bit to the side. And then from here, first shoulders down opening the back and then I, I feel his finger on the pointy tips of my shoulder blades right if I take the shoulder blades out you can see this here it's really sexy <laughs> so here back down I find my range of motion here this is my limit then when I want to go over I'm going to push Steven's hand with the shoulder blades out and up you can see him doing the motion with his hand also so that helps the visual see this this is my cue. If I don't have a partner and I'm looking in the mirror, I want to make sure I still have that space. If you want from here to there, uh, the engagement is definitely not there. All right, so we start again. Shoulders down, open the back. I find my range of motion from here. I want to push the shoulder blades out and up. Oh, really nice little ballerina, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I still have that space between shoulders and ear. And then to come back down, be careful. I often see this. You just think of bringing the arms down. Now, first, my partner has my sweaty armpits on his wrist. Not the best. And then my frame is not engaged. So I often see this when people are dancing, they go for a turn. This is disengaged or sometimes they manage to keep it engaged and they come back down and they're already out of frame. That's because you didn't engage from the back coming back down. So I'm here, up, I have the space, I engage shoulder blades. This is the start of the motion, right? So shoulder blades down and this bring my arms back down. I'm already set up with my connection. Thank you, uh, Steven. <laughs> All right, so super important to find this by yourself. First, for your standard connection or dancing. So again, I'm doing sugar push. I found my open back. I'm doing the follower step here, but it's the same thing for the leader. This is great. Keeping the back engaged and open, awesome. Let's say I'm going for a tuck turn and I'll do it um, back to you so you can see my back. So practice this. Going forward, is this happening? Or are you even trying to fight and really keep that shoulders down and it gets you all stuck here? So reset again. Find that winging, yeah, that opening of the shoulder blade. Practice your tuck turn, inside turn, wherever you want to go. And then here again, remember when you're coming back down, shoulder blades first. So shoulder blades, bring the arm back down. So remember to practice it, we did a little bit more to the side, here. Remember to practice it to the front. So that's my max range of motion from here, wing of the shoulder blade, and then shoulder blades down, coming back here. If you're a leader, same thing. Make sure you're gonna have partners that are taller than you at some point. If your partner is really shorter, it's possible that you're here then. Great, you don't have so much adjustment to do. If you want to practice for a taller partner, let's say you're going inside turn. Same thing, check, are you here? Are you trying to keep it down and this is pulling? Are you managing to get your motion in your winging, in your shoulder blade, and then go for the turn? The third thing you should be practicing is for your styling. So this one, we, we tend to go a little crazier, which can be good sometimes. Um, aesthetically, you have a choice also. If you want to be here and that's your styling, then go for it. 
just remember you're going to need to re-engage at some point. Um, and you can, you can take some liberties or freedom for yourself, but make sure you're um, adjusting back to your frame. So let's say I'm following, generally we have the right arm with the partner, so this one is staying in frame. The other one also, like I'm generally matching both sides. Um, I often see this for followers that they would keep the frame really like heavily engaged on the right and the left is relaxed and it creates this weird dip here. So as a general statement, I want both sides even out. I'm smiling, my arms are down here. Great, no problem. If I want to go above, same thing, practice. Winging, maybe put your hands, that's a little bit awkward, but if you don't have a partner, put your own hand. Feel it, this is opening. I have a mirror here, I'm checking, okay. This space is still there. Adjust your hand, whatever you want to do. Come back down from that shoulder blade. Yes, so we're here. Styling down, that's great. If I want to go up, weighing the shoulder blades, keep the space, come back down here, right? If you do have an elastic, Steven's gonna throw me a really nice, uh, it looks like an ice pack for some reason, but no, it's an elastic. If you do have an elastic, you can practice this. Practice this. Um, be careful with one thing. If you put your elastic to a certain height, I managed to do this, and you keep it down low, it's going to become a little bit more of a workout, which can be good. It's just it's not necessarily what's going to happen with your partner, because generally your partner is bringing the arm up with, if it's for a turn, right? So if your elastic is down low here, you can practice the same thing. So. Back is engaged, finding my range of motion. Here I need to wing the shoulder blades. My elastic is going up, which is good, but I'm gonna show the other thing. So here, going up, up, up. It's gonna become a workout, right? It's a lot of energy here if my elastic is down and I'm trying to keep that engagement at the wing. Good, you can go for that. If you do have somewhere where your elastic can slide and you can bring it with, it can be a better um, duplicate of what's going to happen on the land core. So I'm here, find range of motion, start winging with the shoulder blades. I'm here, maybe I'm going to get a salad if the door opens, and then come back down. So I'm practicing with some tension of the elastic. Workout mode, tension, a little bit more as if I'm practicing turn with the partner. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is what happens when we go to compression. Um, for example, sugar push, so arms are still down, we don't have to worry about the winging and all that stuff. So we've talked about the open back. I often see going in a sugar push because the arms are going backward, the tendency to go here. Maybe not that much, but something like that, right? And you see the shoulder blades getting together. I want you to pay attention, especially in that instance, and practice it by, by yourself with the wall, however you can, leaving the back open and feeling the rotation in your shoulders. So, engage your frame, arms are down, just feel this motion, which we did at the beginning anyway just to find our connection with our partner, right? So this rotation is what's going to happen in the shoulder. The only difference is that some kind of bend happens through the elbow. Be careful here not to let it rotate past and you see how my shoulder is forward I'm still out of frame, even if my back stayed open, this is me out of frame. So find your maximum range of motion. I can't go more back than this, some people can, right? So I'm bending the shoulder eventually when we get the compression 
and then practice it with the wall. So I'm going in my sugar push. You don't even need to do your step. You can just do variety of steps. Back open. Find the compression. Feel the rotation in your shoulders. Keep the back open, right? See the difference between this or this. And then same thing, backing up. And that's it for today. Remember to check the siltonfoundation.org if you want to donate. It's a nonprofit. If you need financial aid, going to events, training, you can apply online.